Good morning and welcome to all. Can we can we have everybody on mute, please? Other than the panel members, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining in on a Saturday morning. Uh, this is a very important subject and important matter uh, for every one of us, for every one of us who are transitioning from the campus to corporate or are on the verge of moving into a corporate life. We have two eminent speakers and one businessman who is a, a founder of Skills Connect, through which we are doing this webinar to address the issue, very important issue of having look at what is in it for all those people who are getting into a corporate life and what is that that they should be aware of and what we should do. So I'm sure you'll all have a very interesting conversation. And uh, there's also a chat button open where you can raise questions as and when you feel it is important for you to ask. Any cool, Riyan. Thank you. So let me introduce to you the three panel members. My name is Neela Kenton and I'm going to be the host for this session. Uh, I have about 30 years of experience and have worked with organizations like Reliance, Xerox, Wokart, JSW and several other organizations. Now I've started something of my own doing HR consulting work. We have with us Mr. Abhijit Parlikar. He's an accomplished HR practitioner, business advisor, and a coach with profound leadership skills. In his career over 20 plus years, has worked with distinguished manufacturing setups such as Tata Group, Suzlon Group, and others. He has completed masters in labor laws and labor welfare and EGMP from IM Bangalore. He's currently based at Pune and is working as senior general manager, human resources at John Deere India. Thank you for joining in, Mr. Abhijit. We have the second speaker, Dr. Mukul Chopra. Dr. Mukul Chopra is an experienced human resource professional. He has a career spanning over 30 years, that is three decades, with an accomplished history of working in the telecom, retail, supply chain, and infrastructure sectors. He is a strong human resource professional, skilled in HR consulting, operations management, executive search, customer relationships, management, customer relationship management, and team building. I'm very happy to say that he's also a mechanical engineer and an MBA in human resource from Punjab University. So you have a diverse experience there to listen to. He's based on a Kurgaon and currently is a CHRO at Convey Genius, an edtech organization focused on closing the gap in education achievement for children and youth in India. Welcome, sir. The third gentleman that we have is Mr. Ranu Parwal. He is a postgraduate from KJ Somaya in Bombay. And he's been a distinguished banker, especially with the wealth management and other financial uh, portfolios. He has started this wonderful platform called SkillsConnect.in, which aims to bring in the college, campus, and the candidate, corporate campus and the candidate together on a single platform so that the entire talent pool can be leveraged to do things better for the corporate life. So thank you, Ranu, for joining in. And uh, to begin with, I would request Dr. Mukul to start off saying, what is it that he sees? What are his perspectives on this important topic of the transition from a corporate, I mean, from a campus to a corporate world. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me on this, uh, uh, you know, forum. And I'm actually excited, and uh, it's always a pleasure to interact with youngsters because uh, nowadays there's a lot of reverse learning which happens. So I look forward to you know learning from you kids out there. Uh, uh, so, you know, for everything, it's like I, I, I define it as a four stages of a butterfly. Okay. Uh, 
so you know now this stage which you are in is like a pupa okay and you have to come out of it and emerge out into the corporate world now how this transition happens or should happen uh, plays a very significant role in terms of impacting you uh, throughout your career so there are certain things uh, you need to look forward to there are certain things you need to be mindful to but the first 100 days when you go in it's a different world altogether you know you suddenly realize that from a river or a pond you've jumped into a river or from a river you entered into an ocean so the first tendency is to feel lost okay but uh, having said that it's an it's an exciting journey okay uh, so you should be in a sponge mode absorb as much as possible you yeah? uh, know uh, reach out ask don't assume right and uh, and and you know so that will essentially define you uh, be proactive don't be reactive So, 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 so for all that hoo ha which is there around it, I think uh, uh, you know, uh, there's it's something you should look forward to rather than dread. Very important, very important, sir. So your your point of saying that the first hundred days is going to be a time when these people absorb, ask, question, recalibrate their thoughts. That's a wonderful thing, yeah. and i'm sure i'm sure doctor we will get into more in detail along the time uh, yeah. thank you so much for the introductory uh, uh, thing that you threw open to all of us now mr abhijit parlikar uh, what are your perspectives on this particular transition or what are the challenges or what do you see what do you see okay i think um, i completely uh, uh, endorse what mukul sir just said at uh, i think so one the most important aspect is apart from absorbing while you transition from the um, uh, the campus to the corporate world uh, it is very important to understand that every learning that we are bringing in is uh, blending blended learning so whatever you are going to learn or whatever you are going to uh, be taught in the college is just the 10% of uh, the overall uh thing that you're going to see or it's just the knowledge that you would take there uh the 20% of the learning would happen from uh conferences and uh, uh you know what we are doing today for example will be a part of 20% which is basically uh learning from others uh in terms of uh coach or mentor or uh, you know connecting with uh, uh you know industry experts or having your networking that's how you learn that so that's a 20% of it in terms of uh, multiple people will guide you in a way in terms of how they see it from their perspective but the most important part here uh, which i would like to emphasize here is uh, self learn so 70% of your learning would happen uh, based on what you do how do you apply how do you apply the knowledge uh, that you have gained uh, in the institutes yeah. on whatever subjects that you are studying i think the most important aspect according to me is how do you apply the knowledge that you learned in your uh, industry and that's uh, that's where uh, your corporate life starts actually where you start applying the learnings that you had uh, in your institutes and um, before even you get into the corporate world i think the most important aspect is uh, you know start getting into the mindset of how do you apply all of these things uh in uh, various different environments or the in institutes and industries that you are going to join in because uh, um you know most of the time students uh, don't understand this that even self reflection or even self study or even self research is also a part of uh, you know self learning where uh, for example if somebody wants to get into um, retail industry uh, his his or her own research about the industry on what does that industry really entails uh what is the overall market size how does uh, industry is going to bloom over a period of next 10 years for example all of that is a part of your own self study so you 
uh, the more time you spent on application of the knowledge that you have gained, um, that is going to help you and not, not necessarily that you have to have a job for that. You, you can start much earlier than that uh, while you are also studying the contents that uh, you are going through and what, whatever subject, whether it's engineering or management, how does that really apply into the real-time scenario is something uh, um, you should get into a mindset as soon as you get into uh, the last year of your study. That is going to help you to uh, get a very uh, safe landing. And, uh, you know, that is going to help you uh, in terms of understanding the overall aspects uh, apart from what Mukul sir uh, just added. So one is that, and of course, uh, while you do all of those things, having fun is absolutely important. So that's uh, that's my two cents on uh, uh, the question that you asked, Mr. Dilkar. Very, very well said, uh, Mr. Abhijit. Actually, it complements each other's uh, ideas because what doctor said was you have to absorb. And you also mentioned about how to do that. You know, application orientation and also looking at the 70 20 10 principle that's a very interesting concept thank you so much and we will deal more into that and let's look at some more practicalities so mr ranu now that uh, you have started a platform which is going to basically deal with this kind of an issue uh your initial comment very very briefly yeah in just two or three lines that will be helpful for everybody for us sure I think, uh, so we're talking about the first 100 days inside the job or into the work world. What happens is inside the colleges or in educational institutes, it's more an informal behavior. Uh, while in the in the corporate world, it's very formal. And what happens is the, you start thinking about that formal ambience and you're not aware of what is going to happen. That's one thing that hits people psychologically and it creates a lot of stress. Uh, you can just relate with, uh, for all the students who are here and logged in, just relate it with your early first week of getting into the college also and you have a similar kind of a pressure. What gives you comfort specifically in that case is your peers and friends who are there or your seniors who are there inside the colleges, that gives you some comfort. And over a period of time, you've got mentors and faculties inside the college which gives you comfort and you basically create an ecosystem which helps you in doing whatever needs to be done. Similarly, if you're entering into the corporates, can you have a similar kind of arrangement which gives you that early comfort the way the friends gave it to you? It's that formal to inform, uh, informal to a formal transition which creates a lot of pressure. And the way you addressed it when you entered into the college, can you create a similar kind of an ecosystem which gives you? And what Mukul and uh, I think uh, even Abhijit told was a proactive approach. And this time it's application of your knowledge. Uh, but in uh, the first 100 days, it's also about your softer aspects which people look up to and start making impression about you as an individual. And that 100 days are very important. What to talk, what not to talk, what to ask, what not to ask. And that's where your peer system, if can be created, uh, people who can be more in the informal zone in the early days will help you. Just an observation from my side. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See, actually, uh, what you rightly said, I mean, I think, Doctor, uh, you mentioned very, very clearly as to the students have to take the proactive step in trying to absorb more and more. Uh, so do you see, is there a disconnect in the current ways of working? That's the question that I would like you to respond to. Basically, I wanted to understand what are the expectations that the students come in in the first job and how do corporates treat them? I mean, how do corporates do that? Do you see a disconnect or do you see an area that we need to work on and get these things done? So your views, sir. So, you know, over the years, I have uh, typically uh, seen that, uh, you know, the batch ranges from uh, people who are extremely inquisitive, right, uh, uh, who, who are more keen to learn from the job. And this, and there's the second set, which is, which still has that hangover of a college. Okay. Uh, so... And and to these kids out there, I'll advise you, whatever was an exception in college becomes a norm in corporate. So these suits which you wear when you had to do a, you know, a event or something. And yesterday I was at IMT. I saw some were fairly comfortable with it. Some were clearly uncomfortable with it. They just wanted to get out of it and jump into a Disney. That will become a norm. The summer training which you do becomes a norm. 
because now you're in corporate. So that is reality. Okay. You need to step out of it and understand it. Okay. And the earlier you accept it, easier it is for you. Uh, fourth I see is, you know, uh, look, you are still in a, uh, these are timelines wherein, you know, you have old fossils like us who sit, still sit at the CXO positions. Okay. And we are very particular about certain behavioral norms. My, uh, you know, I, I often see my counter. So while I have accepted, but it's difficult for me to have my fellow CXOs understand. And, and these are, I'm talking about old world industries that, you know, kids will come in and while they're being addressed, they'll be watching their phones. Okay. The, these are small things, but they're considered as disrespect. So you have to be very careful as to what sort of a culture you have gone into. And then as Abhi said was that, you know, depends upon which sector you choose. You need to see what sort of people which are there and you have to modify your behavior. So behavior modification is very important. Okay. Uh, again, uh, so now I am in a, uh, in a, you know, uh, in, a, in a sector which is fairly new age. I am in edtech now. And before that I was with e-commerce. So average age was like, you know, 24, 25. And if they added me, it would go to 30. So, <laughs> All right. so, so having said that, uh, you know, the thing was that you guys come up with a lot of information because you have Google on this thing, but information is fine. Application is more important. It's not what you know. It's how you apply it. And that's where experience and wisdom comes in. So don't discount it. And thirdly, again, as I say, no learning is ever futile. Every organization will teach you two things. What to do in your career, what not to do. And both learnings are important. They're extremely important. Because if you don't trip, you will not know what happiness is. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so to these kids, when you go in, please understand this is going to be your, you're not a, uh, you know, you're not on a trip. This is going to be your world. So adapt. Your approach is very important. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I mean, actually, this resonates with what Mr. Abhijit had mentioned about, you know, adapt to the uh, environment that you're getting into. I mean, actually, I mean, if this is the wisdom that is speaking and then that is where we wanted to nudge you people to talk more about it so that the youngsters, the talent, the future talent of the country understands this and are more sensitive and use their sensibilities to be around working around these kind of things. So, Mr. Abhijit, to add to your earlier comment, you know, you talked about 70, 20, 10 principle where, uh, where, where how the learning happens. And you also talked about application. So what Dr. Mukul was just mentioning, how do you see that as a discon disconnect in the corporate world now? And how do you think that can be overcome? And how have you done it in the past? So that could help us all understand your perspectives better. Yeah, I think... Um, uh... I completely endorse what uh, Dr. Mukul said and uh, Ranu also brought in certain points in terms of uh, referring to uh, the application point of it. Um, I think uh, just to simply put this, um, uh, the way we, the way I uh, look at it is, uh, you know, considering yourself as redundant after every three years. And probably now uh, I need to rethink about even this three years, whether it should be one year or so. Um, because if you consider redundant, then you are uh, very less likely to get into a comfort zone. Because then uh, that, that con continuous uh, uh, realization needs to happen that, you know, I need to learn something more. Because... Um, uh, as Dr. Mukul said, every industry, the need of application will change very drastically from each other. And uh, that's where 
you know, uh, your own study of, uh, you know, how things are going to shape up uh, is going to really matter. But I think uh, since it's a, it's a start of your career, uh, I would like to apply uh, the Maslow's need hierarchy principles to, uh, let's say, a career planning or career development, how it goes on, right? So uh, all of you are aware of the Maslow's need hierarchy where uh, Abraham Maslow's talked about motivation and how people get motivated over a period of time. And uh, there are five stages uh, that he defined uh, of the needs uh, when it comes to motivation. So when it comes to, uh, you know, straight out of the college, the first and foremost thing for all of you is to get into a job, right? And that's a basic need. That's what I can relate it to, right? And then uh, 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 the next level is the security needs, where you will try to find out something much more secure, which is which is going to pay you better and so on and so forth. Um, and then you will keep on, uh, you know, getting up into the hierarchy where uh, you say self-esteem, self-actualization, all of these things will keep on getting added as you go along, right? Uh, so um, I think the first and foremost thing is uh, rather than getting into very specific of, um, you know, unless you're very sure about uh, what you're going to do or your own self-study is such strong that you would like to do nothing other than what you've thought for, I think uh, uh, irrespective of uh, uh, the kind of industry that you that you are going into, it should be industry agnostic. So you just go ahead and get into a job, start learning, uh, start, start absorbing, as Dr. Dr. Mukul said, and no learning is going to be wasted. So you are going to learn very, very critical and crucial lessons from each and every job that you're going to do. So uh, at the beginning, probably uh, the choices uh, probably will be limited. Uh, and then in case if you're very sure about what you are getting into, uh, get into anything that uh, uh, really will give, uh, give you some kind of perspective around uh, different aspects of those industries and uh, the job. So I think from my perspective, uh, the biggest gap currently is people think that whatever I'm studying is enough, which is unfortunately not. And in the age of, um, uh, you know, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning and those kind of things, even we sometimes, uh, you know, feel that probably we'll be um, outdated soon uh, unless we go ahead and uh, really learn something which will make and which will add much more value to what you're doing. So just by uh, doing merely your day-to-day -day jobs is not going to uh, really help. But you need to add, um, uh, you know, um, measurable impact within the organization. Uh, and even smaller things uh, can contribute to it. Uh, uh, something like a very good cost-saving idea uh, doesn't have to come from a vice president of the organization. It can come from anywhere. So uh, just being aware and making sure that uh, you apply the knowledge uh, by studying yourself on multiple aspects. So if you go, even uh, uh, Dr. Mukul talked about it, Ranu talked about it, you have access to information. Unfortunately, in our age, we didn't have uh, access to information so easily. But now it's so easily available uh, that you can easily do a self-study on uh, how can you improve your impact and, uh, you know, start building your own brand. You know, when, when people talk about Nike or Reebok or, uh, you know, Mercedes Benz, those uh, are the brands which have created an impact. So if it equally applies to you as a person and how you can uh, really uh, create that impact by uh, studying the right content and making sure that you have a lot of information apart from uh, the regular studies that you've done is going to really help you uh, to get there uh, rather than merely saying that this is the concept that I learned. So those are a few things from my side. Yeah, I think... I think you touched upon a very important point saying that there is an expiry date for your education also. You know, you, I mean, with the, with the current trend of AI, uh, well, Dr. Mukul, you, you teach at several schools, so you will be aware of this concept. So when you give them an assignment, they immediately go to a chat GPT, get the thing, copy paste it, submit it as an assignment. I mean, it, this happens because of sheer, the main important point that you talked about application, you know, they look at it more from an ease of use. But like what uh, Abhijit was saying, it is very important for them to look at it from an application point of view and also look at it from a distinct. So what is your take on the entire uh, thing? Saying that how do people 
apply? How do they make themselves more relevant to the context? Because they whatever they learned in their college or in their thing has got an expiry date. And they need to understand how they want to do it. So what is your take on that? So, you know, my observation has been that technology has been a great leveler. Okay. Uh, to be tech savvy, you don't need to be educated. So, uh, my parents' house, uh, you know, they have a man servant. He's what, 14 or 15 years old. He dropped out of school when he was fifth or sixth. He teaches my parents how to do Google Pay. <laughs> All right. Okay. You look at an Ola and an Uber driver. They're not educated. But how do they reach a place? So they have this thirst. They have this inquisitiveness. So education will get you here. It will open a door for you. Okay, they'll, they'll put you at a platform. But to maintain that, you need to continuously work for it. And if you have to, so, so not only to stay at that level, upgrade yourself, you have to work furthermore. But at that level also, don't think that you've done it and you're done and dusted with. Correct. It's a continuous Correct. cycle. Okay. And secondly, about technology, well, you know, these are like, so, why was uh, initially people used to read? Okay, so reading involved understanding, uh, understanding, making this thing, remembering. So your brain worked. Then the radio came in. Radio, you would have those plays, and you would imagine, you know, by the sheer voice modulation in terms of this thing. And then the TV came in, and that it was rightly called the idiot box. Okay, because all you're doing is just watching with your mouth open and the popcorn's in. True. Tech is like the probable serpent in, uh, you know, uh, what you call Adam and Eve, the, the garden, the garden of Eden. That's the serpent. Uh, that's the serpent. So that's tech for you. It'll tempt you to bite and you have to prevent it. Human mind has this thing about taking the easiest way out. Okay, so today that easiest way out uh, you know, these guys have given you on a on a handheld phone. You okay. have to avoid that. And uh, else what we are doing is the next big industry is the addiction. Yes. Okay. So that, that's the next big industry. So my advice to you is that do not shirk away from doing hard work. Okay. Going the, doing the the right way because you are in a marathon you are not doing sprints uh, charles uh, carl lewis yes the sprinter right he can run a 100 meter dash in 9.2 seconds but he can't run a marathon so so corporate is running a marathon you need to preserve uh, you need to uh, you know you need to be very well uh, equipped for a long term distance yeah, okay. So, so this so, brings about a very important question, Doctor. Uh, when you say, I mean, this 100 days would actually shape your future career. You may be, by the time our children come into the job market, some of these people who are joining now could be the CEOs or CXOs. Either. Right, 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 so right. what they go through now will be will be shaping their behavior and kind of stuff so what is your take on this subject and then i'll ask mr abhijit also to share his views because this is a very important view initial setting your mindset and the context i mean it's going to change of course it will change but how will this particular phase of your life change your career okay so you know beginning of the career uh, somewhere when i took over as a CHRO. That was around a decade and a half early. So I used to observe and I used to figure out that, okay, when a new person comes into an organization, you know, whether it's a new hire, okay, forget the new hire, the lateral hire, what is it that requires him to settle down? Okay. Uh, you know, he needs to know uh, where does he get his laptop from? He needs
So you're frozen? Doctor, there seems to be a problem with your internet. Okay, Tushar, can you just check on this? That will be helpful. So, meanwhile, uh, Mr. Abhijit, your take on this. Your take on this. This is a very important uh, concept that you had brought up earlier. So, maybe you can elaborate on that now. Yeah. Uh, so, from my perspective, the first 90 days or first 100 days uh, are going to be the defining moment for each and every individual who is getting into a corporate job. Um, uh, you know, from my perspective, I think uh, one very interesting book which I came across, uh, you know, a couple of years back when I was trying to make career transitions uh, into, uh, you know, a completely unrelated area, which was, uh, so I was always been in HR and I was uh, offered a role which was uh, like a line business role where I was responsible for leading certain operations and business development functions for one of our technology centers that we have in India. Um, very interestingly, uh, I came across this book called as First 90 Days by Michael Watkins. And uh, so uh, maybe you can you can repeat that. Uh, we will ask somebody to put it up in the chat for the benefit of everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. the book, the name of the book is called as uh, First 90 Days. Uh, this is primarily my uh, belief is that this is for someone uh, who is, uh, uh, you know, at the at the juncture where he's starting his career or uh, getting into a job which uh, essentially uh, at a lower level and getting into more um, uh, in the mode of learning a lot of things which are going to help him to uh, do that job better. So the first 90 days, uh, you know, essentially talks yeah, Can about... I just interrupt you? I'll just tell you, I mean, there is a question also around the same thing. What yeah. are the company's expectations for me during the first 100 days? Maybe you can add that also to your context. That will be helpful. Yeah. So uh, I think the most important thing that all of you need to understand is organizations would uh, hire you... Uh, for the knowledge that you bring in and then then they will train train you for the skills they will hire you for the attitude and the knowledge that you bring in and they will train you for skills so let me tell you that we are not looking times whenever we are going to hire people outside we'll all we look at is whether this person is coachable whether this person is trainable and how quickly this person is going to on to the board because yeah. typically, it's a real world, right? Uh, Mr. Nilkand, you will agree that uh, you would definitely, in an environment of, let's say, a service-based organization, they would be finding out ways and means to make sure that the people are ready and they are uh, getting uh, built maybe second month onwards uh, <laughs> as soon as they get into... Uh, true, the, true, right? true, true, true. So the idea is how quickly... Uh, that the companies, first of all, are you trainable? So, uh, I think uh, there's... Fantastic and uh, a very good technical skill because then the person who has um, a good attitude can be trained very well. Absolutely. So, so how quickly you can get trained and then the two aspects of uh, Michael Watkins, which I talked about, uh, first 90 days, which really is a guide to everyone in terms of how do you promote yourself, how do you accelerate your learning, how do you match the uh, uh, styles or the re leadership situations, uh, how can you secure earlier win, how can you negotiate for success. All of these very important aspects, including uh, building your own teams or uh, working collaboratively with the teams, uh, creating conditions, keeping balance, all of these most important aspects. Uh, yes. Michael Watkins gives you a step-by-step -step approach to, you know, get into the first 90 days and uh, the way you approach it. Wonderful, wonderful. See, actually, uh, just to respond to that, what and uh, to, uh, supplement to what you said, you know, it is the, you will have to be 
like what Dr. Bukul also said right at the beginning, you will have to absorb as much as possible. And absorption, like what Abhijit was saying, does not only come from formal training program. You will also have to look at how do you ask questions? How do you do this? So the biggest take from this, whatever Mr. Abhijit is saying, is the learning agility that you show as a, as a student or, or from moving from a campus to the corporate, how do you show your learning agility and the flexibility and dexterity to learn as quickly as possible? You might yeah. be very good in your subject, but how do you translate that into an application-oriented uh, knowledge is very, very important. So, Dr. Mukul, you're back. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, just, Nilgut, I just wanted to interrupt. Uh, yeah, please. The book name is First 90 Days. Okay. First, Not 90, first 90 Days. days it is First 90 Days. Tushar. By Michael Watkins. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank so, you. Doctor, you were saying about that uh, concept when, when, you, when you actually lost the network. Yeah. Was, so, actually, yeah. So, so that's a live example of why you should not depend on technology. It'll okay. leave you when you need it the most. So you need to have, uh, you know, that uh, this thing. So, uh, you know, I won't really, really sum up it, but I call it the four A's. Okay. And and, and it'll, it'll do these kids a lot of good if you remember that is first is ask. So, or, or you can stay in that order, how you approach it. Your approach matters. What you ask, so it's the ask. It's how much you absorb and how quickly you adapt. So that will define. Okay. So the next important thing, and then there's a question also on that. Some insights on time management prioritization technique. Yes, but I would like to add one more concept to it. How should the candidate set goals and strive to achieve them? So, uh, I mean, it is more for them to set goals. Is it long-term goals or short-term goals? Or how do they set their goals and how do they prioritize it and look at it? So, can you give them some inputs on that as well? That would be helpful. Okay. So, when I say, look, there is a difference between goals and there's a difference between objectives. Okay. Objectives make you a prisoner of your own planning. Goals is something which is which are fluid in nature. You want to be there. How you get there, you have the flexibility to go. But keep something in mind. You know, you just cannot run in like a headless chicken. I, I'll tell you, and, 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 and these kids, I'm going to, I'll give you a very honest example. You know, uh, when we grew up, and in the generation we grew up, uh, so, if our parents said no, it was a no. Okay, uh, whether it was for a for a toy or for new clothes or a shoes or something, it 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 went on as a no. So yes, when we grew up, we grew up as a deprived generation. Yes. Okay. So when it came to our kids, we just opened the floodgates. Okay. We gave them anything and everything we felt we were deprived of and they should not suffer it. So today now we are facing a challenge where they know the cost of everything. They don't know the value of it. Correct. For you kids, I'll tell you is that you, we had a very binary outlook. It was a yes and a no. You have multiple choices. But even, I mean, and I'm sure a lot of you, it seems that should be from Bombay side or so, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, yes. Assuming, uh, you know, so if you go to the Chopati or you go to the Gateway of India and you see the throng of pigeons out there. Yes. Yeah, Fort mm -hmm. Kesame, these are those pigeons. So if you run through them, I can tell you, you cannot catch a single one. Until you focus, then your chances are high. So today, you have multiple options. Yours is of not about paucity of choices. Your challenge is the plethora of choices you have. So you have to weave your career. Yeah. And it is entirely in your hands. Very nice. Very nice. Very well said. I mean, it is in your hands. That's true. So there was another thing that Abhijit had responded to when somebody asked, 
how do you demonstrate professionalism and make a positive impression on the supervisor and peers? My views on this is basically saying that don't chase setting impressions. Put your actions in place. And I'm sure Mr. Abhijit will add more value to it. But the whole idea is don't chase setting impressions, making your supervisors happy, keeping them happy. Those are all secondary and binary issues that you can look at. But more progressive ways to look at it is how do you ensure that you create value to yourself and demonstrate that with integrity to the organization that you're working with. Like what Mr. Mukul just said and what Abhijit had said earlier, your capability to show that you are there for learning and to apply what you've learned quickly with agility. Yeah. So uh, I will come to Mr. Abhijit about this particular thing that you had offered to share with the students. But I just wanted to one more question that I wanted to look at was, you know, there could be, I mean, uh, you know, there are multiple goals that students and the college, I mean, the, the corporate set for the students to pursue in the first 100 days. Like I've seen and I've done this also. We have an induction program called the first 100 days and where we say that, okay, this is what you have to do. This is how you have to do. And we mo monitor each and every stage. We give them some sessions and we do this kind of stuff. But is that the way to work on it or with the current changing environment, like what Dr. Mukul said and also what Abhijit said earlier, the world is changing and there is an expiry date. What your thoughts were on the first 100 days are not going to be the same now. How do you create that environment for the students in this age and era? Is If you can throw some light on it in the digital space. Because why I'm asking you that question is for a simple reason. That now the learning is not from the push side. The corporates don't have to push anything. How do you make the candidates pull themselves towards the training program is very, very important. So that's my thought. Maybe you can add more value to it. So please do so. You can go ahead. Dr. Bunkal, you can go ahead. Okay. So, so you know, you have, uh, so the world's changing. Okay. And it's not, so let me assure you, you kids that you are not the only one who are struggling with it. Even corporates are. Yep. You know, we're also trying to adapt to the new normal, as they call it. Okay. Uh, and, and our bigger challenge is that, uh, you know, it is, uh, we have, we have three generations working in the same setup. Everyone with a different thing. So the role of HR becomes much more tougher. Okay. But having said that, uh, today, earlier, you know, it used to be an extremely in those old world organizations or traditional organizations, a very, very structured program. You go to spend finite amount of hours here, finite amount. Now those things are changed because, uh, uh, so don't expect for doles. Okay. Uh, if you think you, you are lack, uh, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're sort of, uh, you need to ask for more. Don't be afraid. And we'll be only too happy to oblige because silence is assumed as acceptance. Yeah. So, 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 as I said, there is nothing called a perfect training program or an induction program. We still talk about, so today, like for example, in my setup, I have people joining in remotely. Of course, we cannot do the same set of personalized, uh, you know, uh, this thing, uh, the laptop goes to their house, they come on board, uh, we do a Zoom call to do an induction session, and then pretty much we don't know what the person is doing. The only linkage we have is through his manager and that too, the manager has it through the remote work, which he's done. Absolutely. So there is a sense of disconnect. There is a sense of where am I? What am I? Okay. Uh, we try to address that in as best as possible terms. But the fact is, even we don't know the right way. We're still exploring. So for you guys, if you feel a little lost, it's only natural. Okay. And you're not the only ones. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's an important point. Yeah. Because everybody's learning and things are changing so dramatically that we need right. to adapt and we need to see how best it is suitable. So, Mr. Abhijit, you had mentioned that there are some tools, some quick tools that you can say because 
that will help the students to understand that better. You're on mute, sir. I think uh, the students were asking about uh, time management and uh, red red flags and warnings and all of that. So I think those that will be a little negative connotation. But I think what you should be focused on is uh, all all that any organization would care for us. How do we improve the productivity and uh, how quickly uh, you are uh, say as as Doctor Mukul said that you know you don't have to be uh, engineer to understand the technology, right? Uh, so um, people like us would uh, always care for doing the things the right way and in a way which will make us much more productive. So I think the the, the younger generation has access to multiple tools in which we can do that, right? A simple thing like, uh, you know, how do we use technology uh, uh, from the perspective of making certain things much more easier uh, you can really learn from uh, this generation. As Dr. Mukul earlier also pointed out that there is a reverse learning which is happening nowadays. So I think uh, all you need to focus on is, uh, one, the organization that you are choosing, whether uh, the, uh, the, the strategic priorities of the organization, the vision and the mission of the organization or the higher purpose of the organization, does that really resonate with what you really care for? Absolutely. That's the one very important thing that you need to keep in mind. Now, uh, now there are multiple people who struggle, who are very good individuals, professionals, but they struggle because they don't have any tools uh, to really work around, whether it is time management, whether it is understanding simple concepts like uh, productivity tools, or whether understanding simple things like, uh, you know, uh, how do you really uh, have better communication conversations with the employees? How do you really do collaborate uh, uh, in, a, in a digital world? These are very, very simple things where people struggle from the perspective of which tools that they use Correct. on making sure that they have access to it. So I would definitely want uh, all the students to note down this website, which I'm going to point it uh, in, uh, in the chat box as well. This is called as mindtools.com. Yeah, uh, yeah. And mindtool.com uh, uh, really uh, helps you to understand very, very simple concepts into tool format. So let's say even if you talk about time management, they'll give you 50 different tools on understanding and then you choose what really uh, uh, makes sense in your own perspective. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think challenging is very good, but uh, making sure that you uh, you challenge it in a meaningful way, respectable way uh, is really going to help. And uh, organizations are really open for uh, changing the styles, changing the, the the way they work, provided it makes sense for all, all of you should not be really uh, focused on, uh, you know, um, you, what are the red flags and all of those kind of things. I think you should be focused uh, more on, uh, you know, what you learn and with the job that has, that has been assigned to you. And how you can do it with uh, the best possible manner in a in a limited time space that has been given to you is all that is very important. Um, uh, Mind tools, uh, as I said, is going to help you with uh, multiple different tools, and there it, it has access to each and every subject. You can just think of a subject, put it there, and you will get at least fifty different articles to understand uh, how things work uh, in a corporate environment. Yeah. So please feel free to use that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, it's again, just to just to add to that is when you are when you are actually looking at it, like what Dr. Mukul and Mr. Abhijit have been saying, that you need to up your ante in terms of understanding as much as possible. There is learning opportunities available. You need to grasp as much as possible and then try and apply it. Not only just purely apply it, but also question, raise important points as a thing. So you don't worry about how do you create impressions. Your impressions will be created like what Mr. Abhijit is saying is by your actions and by your attitude, by your intentions, what you're doing. And the last question that I just popped up was how do you manage office politics? In fact, the three of us would be still struggling to understand what is office politics all about. You know, Every day it keeps changing, every moment it keeps changing. So don't bother about it. 
that's not the area of your concern in the first 100 days. Just look at, okay, you might have to give respect to the authority. You might have to give respect to the functional expertise of certain people, subject matter expertise of some people, and their kind of understanding of the particular subject. So what you need to do is, my, my, my observation on this is that you need to ask questions to the most junior most person as well. Try and understand from him because he's been there in the organization doing a particular thing. So you need to understand those things very, very important. So don't bother about office politics. I'm sure that is not the subject matter. If you have to discuss that, then there's a whole cultural issue that comes up. And I'm sure both Abhijit and Dr. Mukul can go on and on on that cultural aspect of an organization. So at this point of time, just keep it to that, uh, saying that, okay, you contribute to what you are asked to contribute and rather than looking at it as a job and trying to please somebody and doing some things. So now the important point that comes in is that, you know, from the candidate's point of view, uh, whatever you've been saying is that they have to unlearn a lot of things. They have to unlearn a lot of things before they get into corporate. I, when I mean unlearn, it is not only in terms of being negative, but also in terms of saying that, okay, you need to understand these things by questioning, by understanding how it is happening in the place and not being stuck to what and how you have perceived it to be. So Dr. Mukul, you just mentioned about it sometime back in, in the previous uh, comment that you made. So can you elaborate on that piece? Because unlearning becomes a very, very important thing. So how do you elaborate on that and how do you respond to that? So understand, uh, you know, uh, Okay, somebody said that about office politics. I think you're too, 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 too young to do that. Okay, and and it gets you nowhere. Somewhere, you know, sooner or later, you will become somebody's scapegoat. <laughs> so better to avoid it rather than, you know, dabble with it. So one is that. Secondly, is I mean, I'll say is it's not about learning. I don't say unlearn. I'll say is make space for more learning. Okay. Okay. Understand that your your you know you have to recalibrate it at zero. Okay. And now you have to start all over again. Okay. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. So so um, uh, you will be uh, okay. There's something called values and there's something called behavior. So what is required in organization is modification of behavior. Uh, not modification of values. What okay. holds true for you, you know, uh, stick okay, to good. it. Good. But behavior, yes, you can, you can, you know. Uh, so there are a lot of questions pouring in. So, and I also have a couple of more points that we need to talk about. So sure, sure, sure. there is one question that is here is how important is it for new employees to seek feedback and actively incorporate it into their development? Mr. Abhijit, you did mention about it. So maybe you so, can answer uh, that. Believe me, you don't have to wait for it. Uh, you, at every stage, you are going to get feedback. So, uh, you know, how important is it? It is absolutely very important. Uh, and just going back to uh, doc what Dr. Mukul mentioned a couple of minutes back in terms of, uh, you know, making more space to learn. Um, I think uh, uh, there is nothing called as unlearning. You always have it uh, in some part of... Uh, you where you whatever you have seen whatever you've learned uh, in the past will still remain with you but uh, i think uh, he touched upon a very important point of uh, you know how do you adjust how do you navigate from my perspective it is all about uh, managing the style um, you know the style in which uh, you take uh, in in which you uh, in which you manage your people in the style in which you uh, deliver your work the style which in, in which you really um, uh, you really talk and communicate with your people. Um, I think the two most important uh, aspects today would be uh, you know, problem solving. And uh, the second most important aspect is collaboration. These two important aspects important. you need to understand. Yeah. Uh, irrespective of how good you are, uh, you have to understand that you are all here to coexist. And, uh, you know, you cannot say that individual brilliance always works. It may work sometimes, but all work, all works uh, more important is uh, the collaboration style and uh, your approach towards problem solving, how quickly Absolutely. you can solve problems. 
I think that is what is going to define uh, how do you navigate yourself within a corporate world. And I think feedback, yes. as regards feedback, is concerned that any which ways is going to be <laughs> part of your regular. You will problem. get feedback, right? Yes, every actually, quarter. Actually, I just I just read a book. Uh, I don't. It's an article actually. What it talks about is not a feedback, but feed forward. That yeah. is what you people have to use. I mean, you have to take the feed now for bettering your future. So use it as a feed forward and not looking at what has happened and how did it happen and why did it happen. Is so that saying, okay, if I understood that I've done something wrong, how do I move forward and work on it better? I mean, so that's something that you can understand and talk about. Oh, one more question that I wanted to throw open to Dr. Mukul is that, uh, you know, common mistakes that new employees like me make, I, I don't know who, when he says like me make, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. So how do you think that the common mistakes or how are how can you be aware of the mistakes that you make or the i don't know you may want to add that so how do you think they can understand that and do their job better and how do they avoid it so if you can just throw some light on it i mean okay you see i say that the most difficult part in anything is to create a skeleton and then, you know, putting in a muscle mass saying that this has to be more heavy, this could be done like that. That's the easier way. So do appreciate the fact that people before you, you know, uh, uh, they have taken it to maybe 0 to 1 or maybe 2.75. So don't harp on that 0.75 you are in. Okay, Appreciate that it's gone from 0 to 0.75 and how you add value. So the, the, the basic thing is they, it's like, and this is my first boss, you know, he taught me this, is about using negative words. I remember, you know, we were discussing a, a, a policy and he said, I'm thinking like this, I said, not a bad idea. So he immediately corrected me. He said, no, you use two negative words, not and bad. You could have also said it's a good idea. Absolutely. So, so it's a it's an interplay of words. Yeah. Okay. Rather than saying this is not happening, you can say, sir, can we look at it this way? Because that way you're not offending the person. Okay. Right. Okay. Or then that the person will, you know, tell you is that why it's not possible. So then, you know, what you're doing is you you're putting that thing into his court and it he takes it in a manner saying that okay fine he's he's come up with this advice good i like it but let me tell him why it's not done okay. rather than saying sir no this is not there this is not there and we should do this absolutely you don't know what went on to make that absolutely 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 you said that yeah so doctor i mean i think we are already at 12 now so we may want to uh, address a couple of more issues uh, by 12.5. So thank you so much for this uh, the time that you've given us. So there is a question that is asked and I think this was answered very well by both the panelists. Uh, should we start a career with a core field or is it okay to change it according to market needs as there may be examples for mechanical engineer just to go? Absolutely. You have one person right in front of you. He's a mechanical engineer moved into HR. you know, And he's now the CHR of an organization. So see the whole idea is Education has given you, a, a, like what Dr. Mukul and also Abhijit also had mentioned earlier, that will give you, a it will open up a gate. Beyond that, you may want to do something of your own choice and you may build up an expertise around it. See, nowadays, most of the colleges, you see all engineers joining coding, they're joining tech firms, but somehow down the line, they come back to main function or whatever it is. So it is open up. The whole idea that Dr. Mukul and Abhijit have said is that be aware of your own competence. Be aware of what you are capable of doing and how do you build your capabilities for future. And that is where you will have to look at it. Don't stick to today. You might have a poor field. Tomorrow, it can be something else. And the world is changing. The world is thing. Am I right, doctor? And am I right, Mr. Abhijit? If you can share some thoughts on that and then we can... yeah. Yeah, just a few from from my perspective, uh, uh, you know, it it really uh, doesn't matter. 
you know what what is very important is um you know how are you applying the knowledge that you've learned and uh, uh i think is is that the right field for you are you liking it um you know uh, are you enjoying what you're doing in that particular field on a day to day basis uh, is is all what is important but as i said uh, maslow's need hierarchy when you get into Absolutely. a job so the first priority is getting into a job but then uh, as you go along as you experience uh, uh, various aspects of your job you will come across multiple fields which might interest you over a period of time please make an effort to uh, reskill yourself in those areas and why not i mean uh, i i like you gave example of uh, dr dr mukul coming from engineering to hr i i i did my line job uh, in, in in business in the business so yeah uh, absolutely all, so uh, so the learn. whole idea is, the whole idea is you may evolve just like the way the world is evolving you may also evolve so only thing is that you stay employable you right. build up your capabilities to be employable dr mukul I, I just sum it up for these kids so that I, I like to keep things simple. Yeah. Either you like what you do. Yes. Or you do what you like. <laughs> That's a very important thing, right? Right. So, so, so and you can change that. You can have an interplay of that any time. You don't owe an explanation to anyone. Don't Absolutely. get trapped about what people say. Absolutely. I know of a uh, you know uh, I I used to have this boy in my team and he used to be a system administrator he was an IT guy okay career IT guy 12 15 years and then we lost touch the other day I I went to buy some sweets it's a very uh, big store out there and this guy comes in down sir aapne pehchana nahi mujhe main IT mein hota the person who opened the sweets <laughs> He had a passion for it. <laughs> Correct. And he's so, doing well, and he's happy. Absolutely, absolutely. I just, uh, Nilkant. I just, I wanted to add one more point, and this is a very important point that uh, Doctor uh, Mukul came up. And I have seen multiple such examples where uh, people started with something and ended with something, and that's just, that's all all about uh, career versus job, right? Whether you whether you are in a job which will ultimately. Uh, take you to the career that you want to make in, um, or uh, you know, you do something which you really like at the end. Absolutely. Of it. But two cents from my side, most important because when it comes to um, uh, your career, it's it's all encompassing. So just don't think about your job. There's a personal life as well. So uh, make sure that you at least have. One sports which you have a have as an hobby. Brilliant! That, that, that is a that, brilliant idea. That is a brilliant that, suggestion. That gives, you, that gives you a personal me time to think. Because, for example, Absolutely. I play badminton. Because when I play badminton, I am not thinking about anything else. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the most important aspect is uh, any uh, anything related to music. So okay. I personally believe in that because I am a musician myself. So. Um, uh one sports and one hobby which is going to give you uh, a time uh, which is like a me time and this believe me it really helps to uh you know uh recover from all the uh, stress that you're going through uh, in your corporate world and uh, that really makes your complete life good stress buster and, and yeah holistic perspective holistic perspective of life Yeah. So Ranu, having heard all these, uh, so much of valuable inputs, you know, you are in a platform. You're creating a platform where you can reach out to these students because the students keep asking a lot of questions. And maybe what we should do is we can have each individually. Doctor Mukul or Abhijit can spend hours together with the students of this. You know. So how do you create? How did you think of doing this particular platform? And what is that that you have to offer to the students and the corporate world and everybody around in your platform so if you can just throw some quick light on it and uh, maybe we should close after your comments that will be helpful thank you uh, so thanks i think uh, there was quite a pretty insightful inputs from mukul and abhijit i was also learning a lot uh, my understanding when i've been in the corporate world heading an organization as a ceo as well or in my earlier career uh what i continuously kept seeing is that as every corporate side moved across industries and they need people they need freshers on one side and there's a continuous requirement 
almost if you look at the numbers from the industry perspective almost 40 to 45 percent of candidate uh, people who work in the corporates are freshers across organizations if you put it together and on the other side there are students who are continuously struggling uh, for getting corporate ready in terms of uh, i know what do they expect in the in the first 100 days is just one point apart from that what kind of career should they move where would the jobs come in that kind of comfort is not there so there's a huge gap between what corporates or the corp, uh, corporates ask for separately what students are looking out for is a job and the, there are colleges in between which are trying to get people placed also are uh, today if something happens in mumbai uh, if there is a problem with the mumbai bridges we, the government approaches iit mumbai if there is a problem in delhi with pollution iit chennai was roped in industries are ready to look at students coming up with out of box solutions with case studies and multiple such corporate branding activities where students can bring in a lot of continuous engagement our platform skills connect is a continuous co corporate campus enhance the candidate engagement which can be done through the platform and with the outcome of providing them with the first job to the students and at the same time help corporates in their fresher hirings intern hirings and with the continuous engagements uh, that's in a nutshell that we're looking out for uh, uh, or rather we're trying to do and we've been ha uh, happy to or rather we are delighted to have a lot of large corporate startups and msmes on our platform today doing this entire student Corporate, uh, corporate college engagement through our platform today. You're on mute, sir. I think you you touched upon a valuable point, and I think uh, Mr. M Dr. Mukul and Mr. Abhijit did share a lot of inputs that will help you structure your platform in such a way that we reach out to the candidates and build a talent pipeline for future. It's not only for corporates, but also we are upping the ante of all the talent pool that is available because India talks about the largest population of employable graduates. So, and there, that is the role that you can look at. And I think it's a very important thing. So thank you, doctor. Thank you, Abhijit, for the wonderful time that you spent with us. And I think this can go on. I mean, the enthusiasm of the students and especially the enthusiasm of the two of you and Ranu, of course, I we can go on and on. And this is an open-ended, never never an end kind of a thing. People keep asking a lot of questions. So thank you so much for the two of you to have spent this lovely time with the students here. And uh, this is also going live on the YouTube and other channels as well. So thank you so much for your participation, all the people who've joined in. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, any closing comments from the two of you? Quickly, one word or anything like that. We are open to, to that and then we get closer. Yeah. Just one uh, comment, uh, uh, Neelkanji. I think uh, one very important aspect that the student should understand that India is a it, India is a market of opportunities. And just to give you a view from my own industry, so I belong to a global okay. capital. Just to, just to add to this point, I, when you're saying this industry is opportunities, there could be many students who have not got a job yet yeah. or they are not there. So... What is that that you are? Uh, what is that that you are offering them? I mean, it, they could be. Uh, what else they could take up? Uh, I think one thing that they can take up is entrepreneurship. There Wonderful. Are, there are hun hundreds of government schemes, especially the way uh, Modi ji is, uh, you know, kind of promoting uh, the startups. Uh, there are thousands of opportunities available, so they can explore from that perspective. I'm sure yeah. they would, would thought about it. But if they are thinking about it, uh, you know, I've, I've got multiple friends from my own IMB community where, uh, you know, they were absolutely fantastic uh, students, but they started uh, venturing into multiple ideas of business. Absolutely. That is brilliant. Whether it is social entrepreneurship, whether it is any other type of entrepreneurship, that's one way they can explore. But I think the uh, most important thing is no, don't get bogged down. It's a huge opportunity market as far as India is concerned, just to give a perspective about the global capability centers that we uh, that uh, we are a part of. Uh, currently, we have about 1,600 GCCs in India, and uh, that will go to about 2,500 GCCs by 2030. So the amount of people that are currently engaged is about 1.8 million people. Wow. And uh, we are going to go Huge to 2.6, and the gap is widening. The only thing uh, people like Ranu can add a lot of value there is 
how do you really bridge this gap of uh, you know what is required by those people versus what is available and i think uh, uh, all of us uh, will be uh, seeing ourselves to the next level as we go absolutely along. thank you so much doctor one final word from you or sentence from you or a story okay. from you okay so i how many of you did you, you see yesterday's or today's papers or time did you uh, did you see that photograph of bill gates having chai with some this guy at dolly chai wala ha huh, right dolly chai wala what does it speak about one important thing come to india about... just for the heck of it you know yes this is the next decade belongs to you guys what yes. you make out of it yeah okay? it cannot get better than this absolutely right so 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 cheer up i mean headed lie and i mean the good times have come in so as abhi said it rightly you know all you need to do is align yourself absolutely right? upscale yourself yeah and ranu's platform is the ideal this thing you know and, and, and ranu it's a wonderful thing you're doing for these people you know for these kids they require that uh, there is demand it's just that we don't get the right set of people addressing Absolutely. it will bridge one huge gap and help us make where we rightfully had to be you know at the top of the world okay? absolutely thank you so much sir thank you both thank you and thank you ranu for giving us the opportunity to host this session wonderful thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you it's our pleasure sir thank you